Greetings students and welcome back to another lesson on differential geometry. In this video we're going to develop the Fresnais array equations and then use those equations to illustrate some important concepts in differential geometry. But what are the Fresnais array equations? Let's say I have a curve gamma which is parameterized with respect to the arc length s and suppose that gamma is a unit speed curve. As I discussed in the previous video if I pick a point s on gamma there are three important vectors that tell me the behavior of gamma at this point. The first vector is the unit tangent vector t, which points in the direction of the curve. The second vector is the unit normal vector n, which points in the direction the curve is turning or curving and is perpendicular to the unit tangent vector. The third vector is the binormal vector, which is obtained from the cross product of the unit tangent vector and the unit normal vector. This is what b looks like when we use the right hand rule, at least on this curve gamma here. The Fresnais array equations are equations which relate the rate of change or the derivatives of the tangent, normal, and binormal vectors to the values of the tangent, normal, and binormal vectors. Note here that I've taken the derivatives with respect to arc length or unit speed parameter s. We can already write two of the Fresnais array equations from what we discussed in previous videos. For instance, we know that the derivative dt by ds, the quickness at which the unit tangent vector changes, this derivative is in the same direction as the unit normal vector and is scaled by a factor of kappa, where kappa is the curvature of gamma at the point of interest. In addition, we can write the quickness at which the unit binormal vector changes as the normal vector scaled by a factor of negative tau, where tau is the torsion of the gamma at the point of interest. Torsion, of course, being the extent to which gamma curls out of its immediate plane, as we discussed in the last video. Now these two equations already constitute two of the Fresnais array equations. Let's get the third equation. We know that the binormal vector is the cross product of t and n. Given this cross product and given the fact that we're using a right-handed system where you can get the cross product vector using the right-hand rule, we can write two other cross product relationships from this equation. I can write this relationship where the tangent is equal to the cross product of n and b, and also this other relationship where the normal vector equals the cross product of b and t. You can verify using the right-hand rule from this diagram up here for gamma that these two relationships are also true. Let's use this third relationship between n and b cross t and let's take the derivative of both sides with respect to s. If we take this derivative, we can use the product rule to write dn by ds as the following. If we now substitute db by ds and dt by ds from the first two Fresnais array equations we wrote, we get the following. Now n cross t in here is just the opposite of t cross n, so it's equal to negative b. Meanwhile, if we take the cap outside since it's a scalar, b cross n will be the negative of n cross b, so it's equal to negative t. Again, you can use the diagram we drew of gamma of s in the right-hand rule to verify that these negative relationships are correct. When we make the substitutions for the cross products, we find that dn by ds in the end is given by tau times the binormal vector minus kappa times the tangent vector. So overall, given a curve gamma parameterized by the unit speed parameter, or arc length s, and given the three renowned vectors, the unit tangent t, the unit normal n, and the unit binormal b, which each depend on the position along the curve s, the Fresnais array equations are given by these three relationships. The first for dt by ds, the second for dn by ds, and the third for db by ds. Let's now solve an example problem involving the Fresnais array equations. So suppose I've got a three-dimensional curve gamma of t given by the following vector valued function. Our goal with this example is to use what we know so far along with the Fresnais array equations to find the rates of change of the tangent vector, normal vector, and binormal vector, and to find the curvature kappa and torsion tau of this curve as a function of the parameter t. We'll start by finding the tangent vector to this curve, which is just the rate of change of gamma with respect to t. If you evaluate the derivatives of each of these components, this is what you'll get. You can also verify that this tangent vector is a unit vector by taking its magnitude, just with some simple algebra and with the fact that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So this essentially shows that gamma is a unit speed curve with the unit speed parameter t because the magnitude of its tangent is 1. The rate of change of this tangent vector is just its derivative, which is given by the following. Keep in mind that this is just the second derivative of gamma of t. You can also verify using the same trigonometric identity that the magnitude of the derivative of the tangent is also 1. Let's now look at the curvature. 
So recall that the curvature of gamma of t from a previous video is given by the following formula, the cross product of the second derivative of gamma with its first derivative, the magnitude of that divided by the magnitude of the first derivative of gamma whole cubed. Now the dot on the top is used to denote a derivative in t, so just bear that in mind. We can simplify this equation for the curvature using the fact that the magnitude of the cross product of two vectors is the product of their magnitudes times the sine of the angle theta between the two vectors. You can additionally recall from my previous video on differential geometry that if we've got a vector valued function like gamma dot with a constant magnitude, in this case the magnitude is 1, which is a constant with respect to the parameter t, and if we take the derivative of that constant magnitude vector valued function, then that derivative will be orthogonal to the original vector valued function itself. So in this case we can conclude that because gamma dot has a constant magnitude of 1, a magnitude that does not vary with t, that its derivative gamma double dot will be perpendicular to gamma dot. So the angle between gamma dot and gamma double dot is just pi by 2. So as a result, the sine of the angle between gamma dot and gamma double dot is sine of pi by 2, which is just 1, which means that the expression for the curvature simplifies to the following. We've already discussed that the magnitude for each of these is 1, so in the end the curvature of gamma is just the constant 1. And this is where we use our first Fresnais array equation, the one relating the rate of change of the tangent vector to the curvature and the normal vector. We've already got the curvature and we've already got the derivative of the tangent vector, so this just means that the normal vector, since kappa is 1, is given by the following. And since we've got the normal vector now, we can take its derivative to find the rate of change of the normal vector with respect to our unit speed parameter t. This is again pretty simple, just a rinse and repeat of before. And this is where we bring in the second Fresnais array equation. We know from this equation that the rate of change of the normal vector equals the following. But in this case, we've already got the normal vector, so what we're really trying to get out of using this Fresnais array equation is the tau b term. So let's plug in the derivative of the normal vector, the kappa and the tangent vector, to end up with this vector equation. And if we now isolate the tau times b term, we get a zero vector. So this leaves us with two possibilities. The first is that the binormal vector b is zero, but this doesn't make sense since the binormal vector, the cross product of t and n, cannot be zero since t and n aren't even parallel to each other. They're supposed to be perpendicular by definition. The only other possibility which happens to be the case here is that the torsion tau is zero. And this is indeed the possibility that's true. And this brings us to our third Fresnais array equation which gives us the rate of change of the binormal vector. And since this rate of change is directly related to the torsion and since we've shown that the torsion of gamma is zero, we can conclude that the rate of change of the binormal vector is also zero. Finally, let's use the formula for the binormal vector to determine what it actually is. And I'm going to leave it to you guys to show that the cross product of these two vectors is a constant vector given by the components of negative 3 over 5, 0, and negative 4 over 5. So we've evaluated all the critical components of this curve gamma. It's tangent, normal, binormal, their derivatives, and the curvature and torsion. There is a bit of intuition behind this curve, and that since the torsion is zero, we know that this curve doesn't curl out of its immediate plane. It stays in a single plane because, after all, that's the meaning of torsion. It's the measure of how much a curve curls out of its immediate plane. It's oscillating plane, which is formed by the vectors t and n. And we've shown how to use the Fresnais array equations to come to this conclusion. Anyway, that should do it for this lesson. I'd like to thank the following patrons for their support, and if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan signing out.